Hello, everybody. My name is Nick Banstra. I am the special teams coordinator and wide receivers coach at Fairborn High School. Um, today, I'm going to talk on formation tags and one word play calls. Um, before I get started, though, I want to thank uh, Kyle McElvaney and the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association for this opportunity to speak today. Um, I think it's a great platform and a great thing they're doing to try to help edu educate coaches in their state and surrounding areas. Uh, kind of first, I think it's important to give a background. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I know people are just going to kind of skim through this, but kind of just kind of see what I've, where I've been and what I've done. Uh, this will be my third year at Fairborn High School, second as a special teams coordinator. Uh, before that, I was the co-defensive coordinator. Um, and then before Fairborn, I was the defensive coordinator assistant coach at Elgin High School. Um, I have, as you see at the bottom, I've held about every position over the past nine years, um, at, working up from eighth grade assistant at Granville, uh, all the way to being an assistant head coach, defense coordinator, and special teams coordinator. Um, kind of the agenda for today, uh, first we'll talk why tags, why I believe formation tags work effectively. Um, then we're going to go, go through a bunch of tag examples uh, through my experience at Fairfield Christian, um, Elgin, and Fairborn. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about combining tags, and we'll give you a couple kind of examples of that, how to handle wordy tags for when things get a little too wordy and we have too many tags. Uh, then we're going to get into why one word play calls and one word pl uh, play call examples. Uh, first, why tags? Uh, I think it's simple. Simplicity. I'm a big on keep it simple. Uh, we, I apply to the KISS method about virtually everywhere I've been. Um, in terms of simplicity, I think tags allow kids to learn what they need. Instead of having 20, 30 formations and they have to, and kids having to memorize that, they just have to memorize a, a few terms. Okay, this term, I have to be here. It's a lot less. Um, the other great thing about tags, it allows for a lot more multi multiplicity. Um, instead of having constantly to create new formation names when you want to get in a certain set, I can now use tags to kind of get in those formations, move my personnel around, keeps a, little, keeps a lot of multiplicity. Um, and then kind of another reason is I've had some success with this. Uh, when we were at Marion Elgin, um, 2017 season, uh, using this kind of system, we rushed for a little bit 4,900 yards that season. Uh, we had two 600-yard rushing games. We finished 7-3 and three and averaged a little over 49 points per game. Um, and also before I continue this, I want to make sure I give credit where credit's due. Um, first, Derek Catris, a uh, good friend, um, former boss. He was the head coach at Mary Elgin for uh, numerous years. Um, he's the one who kind of taught me a lot of this. Um, and he's kind of learned it from a variety of coaches, uh, double wing coaches, quite a few of them in – uh, Michigan, uh, Dan Terryberry, uh, Jason Mensing, just to name a few. Um, I'd like to also thank his brother. His brother would, would great help me transition and learn a lot of this. Uh, he's currently the head coach at Circleville High School in Ohio. Um, but I, like I said, I want to make sure I give credit to where credit's due. All right, uh, kind of some tag examples. Um, these are not all the tags I've used. These are just, uh, I just want, I don't want to make this presentation an hour and a half long. Um, so I kind of just gave a few quick tags for each position group. Um, just so you know, this, a lot of these tags are based out of a double wing system. Now that doesn't mean that this can't apply to a spread offense, I formation offense. Um, I think these tags are universal. These kind of are things that give you ideas on how to move and how to transition players. Um, for offensive line-wise, we'll talk flip and quick. Uh, for our wings, running backs, you call them slot receivers, depending on your offense. Uh, A, C, out, up, flop. Uh, our fullback, uh, we use bar and ball a lot. Uh, tight ends, uh, right, left, and flex. So kind of just break this down is this was our base formation at Marion Elgin. Um, just typical double tight, double wing, offensive formation. Um, as you see there, we have a quick side and a strong side. Uh, to run a lot of this stuff, you don't need a quick side and strong side, but I firmly believe in a strong side, quick side. If you want to talk more about that, why that is, uh, you have your opinion on it, just message me. I'll have my contact information at the end. But this was our base formation. Um, 
out after day one, we did not have to call this. It, it we ran a play, say rip 24 power. We just called rip 24 power. We didn't put base in there. If we didn't call any tags, the kids knew automatically to line up in this. It's simple. It's effective. This is our auto formation. Um, we we name our, all of our backs A, B, and C, kind of like the old Georgia Tech system, uh, that triple option offense. Um, and then our quick and strong tight ends, we just call them left end and right end. Left end always goes with the quick side. Right end always goes with the strong side. Uh, first one we're going to talk is flip. Uh, flip is extremely simple for those who flip uh, off of the lines, which flips the side. So instead of my strong side being on the right, they flip to the left. My quick slide flips to the right. It's, it's about as simple as you get. Uh, it's for when we want to change up. Because typically when we run our, uh, this offense, power goes to the right, counter goes to the left. We, we had a really good power back this year who ran for 2,200 yards, and our uh, quick side running back, our C-back, ran for a little over 1,500. Um, but it allowed us to change up who's running counter, who's running power without flipping our wings. Um, it also allowed us to change some of our other play calling and um, allowed us to be a little more multiple. We're, the only people that really had to learn anything new in terms of often the play call and run play is our wings. Um, I'm a big believer in keeping it simple for your offensive line. Um, I am a very big believer in your offensive line will can take you a lot farther than maybe a great back can. Um, that's not saying a great back can't do a lot, but if I got five or six really good offensive linemen. It, I mean, you can have a okay back look really good behind it. Uh, next one is quick. Uh, quick is a really simple tag. It just tells our quick tackle to go line up in between our strong tackle and our right end. Um, it allows us to go a little bit on balance set. Uh, we typically ran a lot of power and rocket uh, toss out of this. Um, allows us to hit the edge and expand the formation. Um, surprisingly, it, it is amazing how many defense coordinators at the high school level, especially small schools, that do not adjust well to this. That kids don't know how, don't know what to do, don't, especially the first couple of plays, and usually can get somebody to burn a timeout with this. Um, next, we're going to start getting into our wing slot um, tags. Uh, the first one's A. A just tells the A back to go look, go line up uh, one yard outside of our C wing. Um, we we ran allowed us to run a lot of counter, a lot of fullback toss. Um, and allowed us to expand our passing series. It creates a tight trip set, uh, which gives the defense a lot of problems. Uh, the opposite of that is just C. C just tells the uh, C back to go line outside the A back, uh, one yard outside. Um, again, it expands, gives you a five, um, five side. In terms of a defensive count, creates a very unbalanced set for any defense to deal with. Um, next is out. Out just essentially just turns the formation into a good old ace formation, that, that classic ace formation. Um, with this, you can also go A out and C out if you just want one of the um, wings to split out. Um, but again, just kind of the base level of it is out. The kids, the A and C backs know out, tell me, is, is it a code word for them? Um, it allows us to do a lot more things in terms of passing game uh, and kind of widens and empties the box a little bit instead of having nine, ten guys in the box. We're now having eight, nine in the box. Uh, the next one's up. Uh, we didn't use this much this season. We used it, I think, probably less than five times on the season. Uh, but it just it, we used it to expand. Expand the um, defense, give them more gaps to worry about. Uh, we, we, in all honesty, we probably didn't use this to the potential we could have. We really just used wedge, trap, uh, G down, are kind of the things we used that season for it. But it, it just gives it a different look and kind of just causes confusion for the defense. Um, next is flop. Flop just tells our A and C backs to flip. Um, we didn't use this much because just because – our A back is really good running power, and our C back is really good running counter that year. Uh, but if you have kids that are very good at both, or that you want to kind of get a change up on what they're running without flipping your line, um, flop is an easy one to do. Uh, they just flip sides. 
Barr. Um, now we're kind of getting the fullback series. Barr is actually one of my favorite ones. Um, Barr just puts our B back right behind our uh, strong guard to the right. If you flipped your line, obviously you just go behind your quick guard, but it just it goes to the guard to the right. Um, I personally really love this. Um, it allows us to get a little extra fitter to the to our rocket series. Um, it also allows us to move our wedge instead of running, say, 30 wedge right behind the center. allows us to run 30, 30 to 2 wedge. Um, it's a great change. It's, it's also one that most defenses don't notice, especially on the field. It's such slight. I mean, if you have a good guy in the box, they might notice it, but by the time you catch it, it's usually too late. Um, but it's a good little just change up. It's also a really good one to combine with some of these other tags, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. Uh, ball is just the opposite. Obviously, he goes behind the left guard, whoever the left guard is. Again, it's a great for that rocket series. Um, also, I, I forgot to mention with the bar is this is great for spread out protection, in my personal opinion. Allows him to get some width and cut off the edge. Um, so kind of just timing-wise, better for the quarterback sprint out and for the beat back. Uh, next is right. Uh, we're getting some of our tight end stuff. Right just tells our, our right end to go next to the left end on the outside. Um, kind of just gives us a little more strength to that side. Um, and then obviously left will be our left end going outside of our right end. Um, again, this is not rocket science. These are just simple terms. Typically we try to name them after the position or have a word that starts with a similar letter or has a similar letter in it. Kind of a word association. I am big on word association for our players. Uh, flex. Flex is also one of my other favorite ones. Flex tells both our tight ends to go three to four yards outside of our tackle um, to their side. Um, creates a little bit of a unbounced formations. Um, we tell our A and C backs, if you see the, if you hear flex, this is kind of the only one they really need to know that doesn't necessarily fully apply to them. It's kind of split the difference between the end and the tackle. Um, like I say, it kind of gives that little bunch, tight bunch, two receiver bunch look. Um, this is actually really great to still run Rocket out of. Um, oh, spans our pass game a little bit. Um, it also widens out the box a little bit, allows us to run trap and wedge very effectively that season. Um, next is kind of combining tags. I'm not going to go through every possibility. Um, like I said, this, it, I, this would take an hour and a half to go through, and there's so many comics combinations that would probably take you three or four hours just to put all that together. But I think combining tags, this is where you start getting really multiple. It, I mean, combining your tags allows to maximize multiplicity. Um, but at the same time, I would say I wouldn't go necessarily above probably two to three, three being the top tag, combining tags. Your you're, you're, um, wording gets a little wordy at that point. So when you go three tags, then plus your motion, plus your play call. I mean, you're talking seven, eight, nine, ten words. And at that point, it gets really wordy. Um, I would highly suggest avoiding that. And kind of if you want to do that, like I have a lot, like when we get to one more play calls and stuff like that, how to deal with um, multiple tags, we'll talk about that a little bit later. My suggestion with it is not to go above two to three tags at once. Uh, first, I'd like to say I just put – Grab like two or three of them just randomly, put them together. Uh, first is flip quick. Uh, flip quick just tells our offensive line, hey, we're going to flip our offensive line. And then our quick tackle will go, again, in between the strong tackle and the right end. Okay. Allows you go in balance to the left. Like I said, it's just easy flip for that. Uh, quick A. Quick A is a really unbalanced formation. Um, moves our quick tackle over to the strong side and moves our A back over to the right. Uh, we would actually motion our um, B back a lot out of this and run uh, B back toss out of this to try to hit the edge real quick, overload the side. And then uh, left C. Um, this is kind of, I, I believe this is a very effective formation. Gives defense a little bit of a conundrum. Okay, we got an overloaded balance side to the 
flight where we have a lot of um, heavy and strong. I mean, we can run our down series, belly, um, wedge, fullback toss to the right. But at the same time, I, I, I mean, I got two eligible receivers over there. Um, it's a very unbalanced look. Technically, our tackle is eligible, and though we never ran anything with them. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff passing game and run game wise. Uh, counter naked is ex um, and naked pass are very effective out of this. Um, now, how to handle wordy tags. Um, I, this is kind of where we kind of get in that formation names. Uh, one word for multiple tags because, like I said, it gets, it gets extremely wordy. It's typically for three plus tags. It prevents extremely long play calls from seven out of seven to ten word formation call, you're talking, you're now down about four words. Um, I would not have a lot of these in there because it, it just, it goes back to that form, uh, formation philosophy of keeping it simple, don't want to overload the kids. Um, I will also say, as I show these formations, we, it's like a formation will run to one side. So like for this first one, this was our beast formation. Uh, as I said, we had a really good A back this year um, and we didn't want to have to put a lot of tags to get into this. Move our core back, call bar, okay, and moving our A back to the back. We didn't, we didn't want to do all that. So we just called it beast. And th this is the only beast formation. We don't have beast right, beast left. It's just beast. Uh, we ran a lot of our power blast series. So our ISO out of this. We had a uh, jump pass out of this. Uh, we could snap to the um, B back for a wedge on it as well. Um, we also were very lucky this season. We had a quarterback that about six foot three and could block really well. He's very physical. He's a very good kid. Uh, the next one, example I'm going to show you is missile. Um, like I said, we didn't want to create like five new tags for this. Um, and we, and we used this a couple of times in the season. It was very effective, especially in, in our one more play call series. Like a lot of us go fast and be yeah. Um, we ran a lot, a lot of wedge and uh, be back toss out of this. But yeah, like we didn't want to create new tags that shift over our quick guard, bump our A back, right in, C, C back all down. Like, so we just called this missile. Um, next, I'm gonna kind of get into one more play calls. Yes, there could have been kind of going back. We had more um, formations. I think we had like four or five on the year where we just got too wordy. So we kind of put stuff in, but those are just kind of two examples. If you want to see more or no more, just mess with me. I think I have like one more later in the slide uh, when we start talking more about play calls. But again, these are just a brief example to kind of give you some ideas on what to do. Um, kind of, now going back to one more play calls. Those don't know what one more play calls there are for us. It was just a, for, a formation, a motion, and a play all in one. It's stuff we would yell for a side. We didn't care if the defense hurt us. We didn't care if the opposing coaching staff hurt us. Because by the time you figured out and broke down what it was, we were lined up and ready to go. It, it, we, when, we might have been double tight, double wing that season, but we were the hurry up team in our league. Uh, there was numerous times where we would run a one word series, but we just started yelling one word play calls and we marched down the field in less than a minute and a half. Um, it's also great for third and fourth down. Like, okay, second down, we get, it's now third and one. We go into our play, we get lined up, defense is trouble because we're so unbalanced or moving so much that we get the ball off in about 10 seconds that they can't get lined up properly. Um, our, like I said, it allows us to change our tempo, allows us to go extremely fast. Um, I also think it's simple, okay? It's stuff we practice daily. It's we start this stuff back really after the first week of camp, once we get most of our stuff installed, this is when we start putting it in. Uh, we typically let the kids pick a lot of the names because it's in my opinion, it's a lot easier for kids to remember this stuff if you give them some ownership on it. Um, and it's just, it's like I said, formation, motion play. They, instead of hearing all that out, they hear a word, they know I'm going to do this and go for it. Um, and the other great thing about it is you can add as season go on. Like, I think if I remember correctly, we started with about three that season. Um, by the end of it, we, I think we had about seven off the top of my head, um, seven or eight. Um, but you can build on them each week and kind of just add, add a little bit, uh, kind of stuff you already do. But if you want to add it to that kind of hurry up package, um, you can do that. Uh, you can also hand, it's a lot easier hand signaling one word 
in a formation motion play. Um, our head coach also had some hand signals in it, but after a certain point, he just said, I don't care if they know what the call is. They still got to defend it and get lined up in the amount of time. Um, kind of the one more example is I kind of just pulled three out of the old playbook. Like I said, we used about seven or eight of them that season. Um, our head coach kind of kept it all houseware, especially kitchen related for some reason. That's kind of what the kids agreed upon as the head coach. And like I said, it was effective. Um, so I'm gonna go over knife, sink, and kitchen today. Um, knife is actually just, is our base play. It is a play our offense is built about, uh, around. It's RIP 24 power, uh, but kids hear knife from sign. We hustle, we get our base formation. We, we run RIP 24 power. I'm not going to get into depth real right now. Um, all the rules for RIP 24 power. If you want them, just message me. I mean, I could talk all day. I love superpower. I think superpower is a great play. Um, I know quarterbacks don't necessarily love playing in it because they have to leap through and attempt to block the corner or any overhangs. Um, I also want to show an actual defense. Like, there, and I'm going to go on a quick rant here real quick. This is one problem with going to clinics. Like, when you see people talk double tight, double wing, they show a bunch of four-man, four-four, and just like four-three formations, stuff you will never see. When you run an offense like this, for those who are interested in offense like this, you're going to see six, seven, eight-man fronts. That's just what you're going to see. And we just practice daily against that. Um, and you'll see all kinds of crazy stuff. You'll rarely see too high. Teams that are run too high are usually have really good athletes. Um, in the two years, I, we ran this double tight, double wing system. I saw too high against one team. It was a very well-coached team. Uh, but going back to this knife, knife is just ripped 24 power. You hear knife, we're going to line up in our base play. The expectation is to get five or more yards. Um, next one is sink. Um, sink is um, in our formation. I didn't get to show you. It's our hammer formation. Um, as you kind of see, um, we have our quick side over here. Our strong side, we've moved over our end. Um, we bumped our B back out, we brought in our C back, and we bumped our A back out, back. Um, and then 24 blast is just our, essentially our ISO play. Um, again, we taught, uh, another thing I forgot to mention, on power and then stuff like this on hammer, when our A back set back like this, it's a toss, so our quarterback can lead through. Um, but this is sync. Um, it's, teams typically have a very bad problem getting lined up to this when you run this really fast. Um, there were several times this season when we ran sync that I, opposing teams called timeouts. Um, but it's a great thing to get an unbalanced set and just lead through on side. And again, we had a very good A back who loved running people over. Um, kitchen. Uh, kitchen is, again, that hammer formation, but this time we're going to run counter out of it. Okay. So for when you guys are lining, figured out how to line up to it and you think we're just going to go that overload side, no. We're now going to run counter backwards. Um, again, we had a really good counter back. Um, it actually was a better angle, in all honesty, for our B back. Uh, instead of having to do his jab, step, and go, I mean, it's just follow, follow our uh, guard and tackle there, lead up through. It's a very effective play. Um, I do apologize for not necessarily having film on a lot of this. Uh, I am in the process of moving at the moment. Um, if you want to see film on a lot of this, film on the plays, film on the formations, all you have to do is just shoot me a DM or an email, and I will gladly get it hooked up probably about a week or two. Probably by the time this posts, I'll probably have everything organized. It's just with me in the process of moving, I didn't really have access to get it uploaded or time. Um, but these were literally just three very simple play calls we had. We had about another three or four. Um, and like I said, we, we, were the, we became the hurry-up team in our league. I mean, we could just get up and down the field pretty easily um, and effectively running these calls. Um, kind of last thing before I finish up and wrap up this presentation, um, kind of going back, I would, especially with the – one more play calls and the shortened formations. Try to find a theme to wrap around. Like my my in hindsight, the only thing I regret that how this looked, like for like the hammer, the beast, is I wish we would have put it in a family of words. It allows the kids to understand it a little easier. 
Um, I think we did a fairly decent job of that for our hurry up stuff. But again, try to find words that kind of go together, that kind of make it a family of things. Um, also on your screen now is my contact information. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it, know about me, I also run a YouTube channel that provides free clinics from college and high school coaches across the country. There's over 130 clinics on there. If you just search my name or search, search Coach Banster, you should be able to find it on there. Um, the easiest way to get a hold of me is through Twitter, uh, at Coach Banstra. Um, I check that probably the most. I'm on there usually messaging coaches or posting stuff. Like I said, you got any questions, just shoot me a DM on there. Uh, give me a follow, I'll follow you back. As long as you, if some says you're a coach on there, I usually follow coaches back. I'm very big on helping expand coaches and giving coaches a platform. Uh, my email is nickbanster at yahoo.com. Um, I don't check that as regularly, but again, if you send me an email, I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, and then if you're interested in any other clinics, um, I've done three for cheappigskin.com. Uh, one on going simpler, changing from a four, the 425 to the 44. Um, that's based off my year at Elgin. Um, when we switched defenses, it kind of made similar and uh, improve what we were doing and kind of right the ship on a, a struggling defense. Um, second one was special teams development or some drills I ran in the off season. My first year going into uh, becoming a special teams coordinator, uh, just kind of generic drills. Uh, the third, I gave this past off season to two pacing is changing the culture of a struggling program. Kind of things we're doing at Fairborn to change the culture uh, from leadership councils to uh, summer competitions and more. Um, like I said, I hope everybody enjoyed that. I hope everybody got something out of that. Again, if you have questions, you want to see film, just message me. Like I said, I'm in the process of moving. I will gladly get that to you as soon as possible. Um, and before I get off here, I, I again want to thank Kyle McAvaney and the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association for this opportunity. I appreciate it. I appreciate what you're doing for the coaching, coaching community. Um, and again, I, if you have any questions, just message me. Thank you and have a great day.